Hello students, this is Pathology Chapter 2, Inflammation and Repair, Lecture 5. Inflammatory periapical lesions include the periapical abscess, dental or periapical granuloma, radicular or periapical cyst, resorption of teeth, focal sclerosing osteomyelitis, and alveolar osteitis, or dry socket. Inflammatory periapical lesions can be caused by caries or trauma, which result in inflammation, infection, chronic hyperplastic pulpitis, necrosis of the pulp. The inflammatory process begins in the pulp and then extends to the periapical area through the radicular pulp. Accessory canals may lead to areas of inflammation on the lateral portion of the root. The acute periapical abscess is composed of purulent exudate surrounded by connective tissue which contains neutrophils and lymphocytes. The inflammation produces severe pain. The tooth may slightly extrude from the tooth socket. It may or may not test positive with electric pulp testing. The periapical abscess then forms a fistula or fistulous tract, which is the channel of least resistance. The presence of fistula warrants a radiographic evaluation. The fistulous tracts allows the purulent exudate to escape. The periapical abscess may develop directly from inflammation in the pulp, but more commonly it develops in an area of previously existing chronic inflammation. Treatment may include drainage and endodontic therapy or extraction. A dental granuloma, or, or periapical granuloma, also called chronic apical periodontitis, is a localized mass of chronically inflamed granulation tissue that forms at the opening of the pulp canal, generally at the apex of a non-vital root. The characteristics are, it is a chronic process, most cases are asymptomatic. The tooth may be sensitive to pressure and percussion. The tooth may be slightly extruded from the socket, which would increase the chances of traumatic occlusion. Treatment involves endodontic therapy or extraction. The radiographic appearance of a dental granuloma may vary from slight thickening of the periodontal ligament space to a diffuse radiolucency to a distinct, well-circumscribed radiolucency surrounding the root apex. The dental granuloma is composed of granulation tissue containing lymphocytes, plasma cells, and macrophages. It may also contain neutrophils, areas of dense, fibrous connective tissue, or epithelial rests of malassez. A radicular cyst or periapical cyst is a true epithelium-lined cyst. It is associated with the root of a non-vital tooth. It is the most commonly occurring cyst in the oral region and is a result of proliferation of the rests of malassez. It is usually asymptomatic and discovered on radiograph. It is asymptomatic because of its chronic nature, the fact that the tooth usually is self-draining, and there is no vital pulpal tissue. The radiographic appearance is radiolucent, well circumscribed, and looks very much the same as a periapical granuloma. The treatment would include endodontic therapy, 
apicoectomy, or extraction and curatage of the periapical tissue. A radicular cyst or periapical cyst, which is not curetted out after extraction of a tooth, leads to the presence of a residual cyst. You will see these cysts in the location of a pre-existing tooth. It forms after tooth extraction and all or part of the radicular cyst is left behind. The treatment is surgical removal. External resorption is a non-reversible resorption of the tooth structure beginning at the outside of the tooth. It could be caused by inflammation, pressure, reimplantation of an avulsed tooth, or it could be idiopathic. Internal or root resorption is resorption that is often associated with an inflammatory response in the pulp or for an idiopathic reason. Clinically, the appearance is a pinkish area in the crown resulting from the vascular inflamed connective tissue. Radiographically, it is radiolucent. The treatment of internal resorption if the root is not perforated, calcium hydroxide may be placed after endodontic treatment is performed in an attempt to save the tooth. If the tooth is perforated, it must be removed. Focal sclerosing osteomyelitis, otherwise known as condensing osteitis, is a change in the bone near the apex of teeth. It is thought to be a reaction to a low-grade infection. It is generally asymptomatic. If painful, it may be associated with pulpal inflammatory disease. The radiographic appearance is radiopaque. The borders may be diffuse or well-defined. It is commonly associated with the mandibular first molar. No treatment is usually necessary. Biopsy can be done to rule out other radiopaque lesions such as osteoma, complex odontoma, or ossifying fibroma. Alveolar osteitis, also known as dry socket, is a postoperative complication following tooth removal in which the blood clot is lost before healing can take place, leaving raw, exposed nerve endings and bone most often occurs in the mandibular third molar areas. The patient may complain of pain, bad odor, and bad taste, which can occur up to two weeks after the extraction. Risk factors include dissolution of the clot at the surgical site, traumatic extraction, presence of infection prior to extraction, or tobacco smoking after extraction. The treatment includes gentle irrigation, sometimes with chlorhexidine, or daily application of dry socket paste containing eucalyptol until the symptoms are relieved. The following are questions for discussion and review. What cells appear first during an inflammatory response? What is the difference between healing by primary, secondary, and tertiary intention? What is the difference between regeneration and repair? What is the difference between attrition, abrasion, and erosion? What injuries to oral soft tissues may be observed within the oral cavity? What is the definition of reactive tissue hyperplasia and what forms may be observed within the oral cavity? What inflammatory periapical lesions may be observed within the oral cavity? This concludes Chapter 2 of Pathology.